cash has a cost associated with it, you need to store it, you need to insure it, you need to protect it. And so most people are not going to run around with large amounts of cash just because there's a quarter of a percent negative interest rate. Zero lower bound is uh, really imposed by the idea that you can have positive interest rates but you can't have negative interest rates because if you have negative interest rates everybody would rush into cash. People are worried that monetary policy is, is constrained by the zero lower bound and that in particular we're in the middle in the United States but also in the UK and Europe of a recovery, but it's a very anemic recovery, it's a very partial recovery. And uh, already I think many people, and particularly in central banks, monetary authorities, are thinking about what happens if there's a recession in this kind of environment with unemployment still at high levels. Uh, don't you need some additional monetary instruments in order to tackle the problem? Negative interest rates would really apply a penalty on holding large stores of cash and the hope is that it would push people who have a lot of cash into doing things like investing, uh, lending to businesses, uh, things that stimulate the actual economy. Many participants were discussing how negative interest rates would not only be applied to bank balances, which they are in some countries already in, the, in, in Europe, there's already a degree of uh, unease about the very low interest rates and people who are dependent on savings find that very problematical. So you can see how this kind of discussion is actually likely to, to produce a big negative impact. I think it is an act of desperation in the face of a really difficult conundrum about how to deal with this, this uh, long period of stagnation. I mean, I must say also my preference is that I can think of all kinds of microeconomic ways of getting stimulus that don't depend on this kind of mechanism. We had an interesting discussion at the conference about whether this is analogous to the end of the gold standard in the 1930s or the end of the fixed exchange rate regime in the 1970s. I think both of those episodes are really associated with extreme turbulence and the breakdown of political systems. And I was worried that you would get exactly that kind of negative impact, negative political impact as well with, with this kind of change. The standard range of options that I think are uh, discussed are ways of making the labour market more flexible, ways of making it easier to finance credit uh, expansion, so a less bank dependent system, more capital markets. One of the reasons that the United States is a bit more dynamic, I think, is that it has a better capital market and we're not so bank dependent as Europeans are. At the moment this is a very theoretic discussion and I think there are other and more concrete uh, measures that really need to be ad adopted more quickly. I think you have to really be uh, wary of thinking that there's a monetary policy magic bullet that can solve every problem.